to order. Is there any uh, adjustment, changes, additions to the agenda? And just note, first item, one of the meeting minutes, May 6th, is in this print. There is no meeting minutes for May 6th. Any other changes? Aren't right. the ones you did not approve the last meeting? We got the 13th, both of them, the dog period and the meeting, the 20th of May, and then June 3rd. We don't was that one that you didn't? There was, was one that, that we recently it? didn't approve at the beginning of the meeting, <coughs> and we approved a little later on in the meeting. Uh, one, a member was late arriving. That was me, yeah, because I had some changes to make. Yeah, we changed those. Yeah, and we approved those. We approved I those. think. Okay. Is that the May 6th, the one you were question? Yeah. Any other addition? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I want to talk about the bread oven and some issues they're having with it. Um, I want to talk about um, the inclusivity statement getting it on our website and about the racial justice workshop that you're talking about. Anything else? Anybody? No. On the um, recreation item that we have here, item 14, I'd just like to add on some um, uh, maintenance to Mill Park that I'd like to add on to there. Is that it? Okay, the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes for May 15th. Both the dog hearing and the regular board meeting as well as May 20th and June 3rd. Move to approve the whole slate. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say from saying aye. Aye. Those both. And before we go any further, I'd like to officially welcome Howard Brown, who's uh, going for his Eagle Scout and from Florida. <coughs> well, hey, since we're doing formalities, can I do something real quick? I just want to say thank you. Our congratulations to Eric Osgood on your uh, Marvin Award. It's very well deserved and earned, and uh, really glad to see that that, that happens. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate you guys putting the nomination in, and I appreciate you guys all being there. Uh, it truly is an honor. Yeah. Thanks. Rosemary, you got the floor. Okay, you got your budget status reports. And to date, we're at 89% of budget of, for expenditures. And that does not include the set of orders that you signed tonight. And I started working on my year-end stuff, mm -hmm. which I haven't completed yet. I want to talk to the both, both the Bryant and the Highland stuff. Because there's some categories that have a high budget about and a little spent in it. So. Okay. We just think the last month was going to, well, actually the last couple of weeks, I guess. We we're doing pretty well then. Yeah. That's saying something given the winter we had. It. Yeah, because some of those winter items are overspent a lot. Okay. And there's a 
schedule of our listing of current taxes, delinquent current taxes. And currently that's at 150000 for the interest and penalties. Is that typical? Just yeah, at this point, yeah. There's been quite a few people calling to make pay, pay arrangements. It's always the last two or three percent yeah. to collect that's the hardest. And I gave you a letter from David Carruth. He sent his May payment, um, Post Office Express. And the Post Office made a mistake and sent it to Plymouth, Vermont, instead of Johnson. So he was three days late. He was asking to waive the fees, which are a total of $87, $88. He did receive a refund from the post office for the express charges because of their mistake. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, have we ever waived a late fee? Yes, it wasn't totally his fault. Yes. No. I know a lot of people have had good excuses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To my knowledge, we never have. And that was my recollection. We've never done that. Mm -hmm. What's the board's pleasure? Because you can clearly see the post office. Instead of a zero, they put a. Instead of a six, they put a zero. Can I see? Yeah. Yeah, which David would have written. And right. I believe this is what the post office Yeah, they do. That's a six. That's oh, five. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. Mm. What day did he send it? Uh, the night. Tenth. But the post office guaranteed oh. it to be here by 3 o'clock on the 10th. Uh, mm -hmm. Motion to waive for $80, $88 penalty. Just because it was the post office's fault. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. Good second. Any discussion? Do you need the name of the person you're waving it for? Because I didn't catch that. David Carruth. C A R R U T H. This will require all three of us to vote in favor and I will not be voting in favor. If you want to wait until uh, Mike gets here, who's going to be a little late, we can bring it back up. You can vote on it. I don't mean. Okay, all those in favor, simply by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion doesn't pass. Next item. Um, last year's tax sale, Three properties were not redeemed. Um, for Glendon Ingalls, uh, Jean Goss, and Blackridge. And the town purchased Glendon Ingalls and Jean Goss. And someone has come into the office and is interested in buying Jean Goss's trailer. What do we typically sell it for? What the tax? Well, yeah, unless. 
we sell it for more than what we put into it, we have to give um, Gene Goss mm -hmm. the difference. What's the value of it? Do you, do you have any, what's, what's it listed for or anything like that? I didn't look that up, but it's probably about really? 3500 to $4,000 worth of taxes on it. So are you making a recommendation we sell it for what's old? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not going to gain anything because we have to give it. Right. And um, we need, probably need a motion on that. Do we have to go through the notice and all that stuff too? When we sell, when we sell property? I would think so. Mm -hmm. I don't expect so. It's probably yeah. town property now. So. Well, um, Andrew Walsh is going to be working on the transfer papers this week, so. Okay. And what do you want to do with the other one? And what's the other one? Another trailer? That's another trailer in Mountain View Park off of Wilson Road. To my knowledge, people still live there. They still live there? So we got to start the eviction process. So you better get the attorney involved. So what's the motion that's needed for Gene Gosses to... We'll look for a motion to authorizing the clerk or is it you that sells it, or would we have? Well, I sell it to the town. The only town sells it to whoever. Okay. So you'd be looking for a motion authorizing the sale of the property to whoever is coming up at. Well, starting the process, you know, the, starting the, process. the legal process. Yeah. With what's owed on it. Mm -hmm. That you're so moving. <laughs> I'm so moving. Okay. Do you have a second? <laughs> I'm sorry. So moving to sell the trailer that's what we owe on it. We've got an interested buyer. Well, I think that's what we want to do, but mm -hmm. I thought we don't have the authority to do that. Well, we'd start the process. Yeah, because you've got to give a lot 30 day notice, put in the paper, and some other things. Okay. Yeah, it's not, I mean, the motion is to go start that process. Right. Then, right. Right. Yeah. then I second that motion. You got that, Don? In, in the motion, do you need anything specifying what trailer it is, like uh, address or the name of it? Yeah, we trailer. should have that. Yeah, Gene Goss and, and Katie Wynn Trailer Park. Gene Goss. Goss, G O S S. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, simply saying aye. Aye. Those posts. Ayes have it. Uh, probably need a motion to start the uh, eviction process on the second. Once we get the transfer done. What's that? Once we get the transfer done. Once we get the transfer done. And what's the name of that property? Glenn Ingalls. And that's also in. Uh, that's in Mountain View. Mountain View. So look for a motion to start the eviction once the transfer is made. Is there a motion? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so move to. To do a start start the eviction process. When's the last time we've evicted? We haven't done this in years, have we? No. They usually usually have been abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, if somebody's living there, they pay the back taxes on it. Second. Motion is second. Any more discussion? What? Uh, Instead of just serving an eviction notice, can we, I mean, I, I assume people are plugged into social services, um, capstone, et cetera. Um, 
can we make sure that 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 they are and not just provide them some some uh, lifeline beyond just throwing them out? Well, sure. eviction process is a lengthy process. It's lengthy. And you just can't go say, get out. Right. Any more discussion? All those in favor, same favor, same aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye, it's heavy. That's all that I have. That's all you got? Did you, were you looking for action on the, the, the property over there? That was a private sale. Oh, that's a private sale. Okay. Yeah, somebody else bought that place. Okay. You got anything else? Nope. Anybody got any questions, Rosemary? If not, Brian, you got the floor. In my report, uh, there's just one thing I wanted to bring your attention to so you're aware of it. I brought a, in a, in a gravel pit, one of our high banks because of the quality of the spring that we had and the moisture. Starting to slough a little bit, so I brought in a hoe and from Dave Joe, we took off some of the clay that we need to move anyways and used that to stabilize that bank, mm -hmm. just so there wasn't any issue. I don't know if it would come in or not, but now we don't really have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, there's really not too much to, that I needed to discuss. Um, I went up this weekend and looked at Hunter Road. I thought it's a very reasonable job that's being completed up there. In fact, it looks good. Uh, have you had an opportunity to meet with Mr. Jones? I talked to him on the phone. Okay. Um, I explained that we weren't done and we were probably finishing up the day. We're finished with his that side of the road of the other end. We have a few hours left, but that's all cleaned up and ditched now. Uh, his ditch in front of that, in front of his fields, is no deeper than it was. We just cleaned up the piles that were generated when we created the ditch. Okay. Uh, the rest of it's all, you know, mostly cleaned up. I asked him to go look at it when we were done, and if he had any issues, then he can call me back and I would go meet with him. Okay. He seemed like that was, you know, he agreed to that. Good. So we'll look at it tomorrow or whenever he looks at it, and we'll go from there. I didn't think access to his fields was impeded at all. Right. You know, it might be a slight dip now to go in, but there really wasn't that much of a, of a ditch. So I snapped photos and just documented it, and that was it. Okay. Thank you. Just for your awareness, I have received an email from Brian Jones with concern about some of the ditch work that was being done up there. I asked Brian if he'd follow up, the two of them get together, mm -hmm. work out a compromise. Brian, I would ask if there was any, if there was any movement towards chlora, whatever in the <laughs> chloride, <laughs> chloride in the Old Mill Park. There can be now that we actually have some weather yes. that dries things up a little bit. Yes. But it has, it's been pretty wet and I don't yeah. want to track up okay. the place. Okay. But yeah. it's, it is on the list. Okay, cool. Um, the other thing I noticed doing the walk around was maybe it's on your list, Matt, is there's a dead tree in the middle, uh, um, sort of on the hill that overlooks the lower field. Just by the parking lot? No. Uh, no, by, there's a bench right near it. Um, more on the far side towards the skate park side, the hmm. river side. Okay. Very, very dead. I don't know if it's a safety concern, but it, it, it aesthetically doesn't look good. I don't know about safety. It's not that big, but it's not a leaf on it. I'm not sure I followed exactly where it was. Um, At Mill Park, you were talking? Old Mill Park, so on the um, river side of the park. Okay. On the hip, past the pavilion. Mm -hmm. On that hillside that okay. overlooks the lower field, um, there's a bench and there's a tree that's very dead right next to it. Yeah, it's a pretty small tree. I've been it's meaning, small. I've been meaning to go in and cut it down myself, okay. but okay. I haven't yet, so yeah. I'm willing to do that in a couple of weeks. Okay. So. okay, that's something I shouldn't worry about. I brought it up because I wasn't sure if it was. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's, it'll, it'll be a great job. Okay, cool. 
Anything else? Anything from you? Anything else? I'm good. We've got a couple of items. Well, Brian's here. Uh, the paving proposals you'll probably want to stick around for. Uh, and then we were going to talk about the on-call, uh, the on-call pay proposal. And you're welcome for that discussion also, but you and I have covered that pretty well, so. Yeah. I don't think you have to stay for that one, but I would appreciate it if you stayed for the paving. Yeah, if the on-call pays later, I'll probably bug out after the paving. Okay. Good. Do we have anyone for the planning commission or any kind of report? No. Okay. Anything from Susan and Howard? Howard uh, is was going to come. Okay. We'll go back to the little okay. bit of a schedule. Uh, Amy, I'll defer you until your scheduled time. Oh, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, de I'll defer her until her scheduled time. Defer you until her scheduled time. Because I think Mike Dunham will be here. What's that? Wait, we got to wait for a while. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so that puts you right into your report. Okay. Well, uh, we can go ahead and get started with the paving proposals. Okay. So, we have received... Three paving proposals from Pike Industries, Whitcomb, and Jay Hutchins. And we'll go ahead and open and review these. $84 per ton, 790 tons for a total of $66,360. How many tons was that again? Uh, 790. 790. And what was the name of that company? Sorry. Whitcomb. Whitcomb. Got Pike. At eighty nine seventy per ton, seven hundred eighty seven estimated tons for a total price of seventy thousand five hundred ninety three dollars and ninety cents. And if you want to see specifics about any of these proposals, you can pass those down. And the last bid we've received from uh, Jay Hutchins. And we have a representative from Jay Hutchins here. $75 per ton, an estimated 808 tons for a total price of $60,600. companies are companies we've worked with before on a variety of projects and have good relationships with. Um, Hutchins did our paving project last year and we're satisfied with the result. Um, okay. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> or does no. it speak for itself? No, no, it should. <laughs> what was the paving project last year? Maple, Park Collins, oh, yeah. French. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
And this Art one's clay. Whitcomb or uh, Westcomb Footbrook. Footbrook, and a little piece on Prospect Rock. Prospect Rock. Okay. Not plot this year. Uh, plot is targeted for next year. We're going to go up for a grant to help pay for that one. Okay. Uh, we'll have to do a lot more reclamation work okay. on that, and it'll be pretty expensive for a relatively short section of road. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea was we'll go for a grant plus we'll have, we won't be spending We'll have all of next year's, most of next year's money as well, so we could combine the two yeah. if we need to to get it done. Okay. Well, motion to approve the uh, bid from Jay Hutchins. I second that. A motion is second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. There's a uh, there's a contract in there that's signed if you can if you can get that signed. Need a motion on the sheet to sign. It's in the package. I think I I think it's in the package. Yeah, okay. the, the last sheet of it should be uh, signed. Any motion to that? That's really good. Yeah, maybe a motion authorizing the chair to sign. So moved. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Just spend money before Mike gets here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to keep that, you can email me. Yeah, please. Like <laughs> 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 okay. I'll be in touch. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for coming in. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Duncan was coming in for the historical society, right? Uh, we are hoping to get a representative from the <coughs> historical society, but uh, given that we have somebody yet, we may not. So we can at least start with the uh, building proposal. So the historical society has received two bids uh, for repair work to the um, Thank you. Uh, two bits for repair work to the uh, Holcomb House. Uh, if you recall, this is the water damage that happened over the winter. Um, and the, the bids are in the uh, packet, the village builders. The two are very close in price and in um, kind of the scope of work is really similar to that. They, they really want to accomplish the same thing. Um, they give us a couple different options. Uh, the village builders is a little bit hard to read because they cover this project and uh, what we're going to get into in a few minutes all on the same uh, estimate sheet. Um, but they both amount to right around 1,800 for the repairs. It will cover um, ceiling tiles replaced and uh, the flooring replaced with a uh, kind of what they call a click plank, uh, which is a pretty quick install uh, synthetic solution. It'll have a wood-like look, but uh, it'll be easier to maintain and will go in pretty quickly. Um, you know, so the the historical society's request is that since the these two are pretty close in price, that the determining factor being who can mobilize first. And who was that? Uh, they don't know. It'll have to come down to when they're approved to expend the money. Uh, they'll get a start date from each builder and then select the one that can start sooner. Here's Dean. Here's Dean. 
Dean, you're in just in time. We're talking. Uh -huh. We're talking about the Historical Society's proposals. Well, you guys are really moving. <laughs> I was told eight, so. It's, oh. it's going a little fast this, this evening. How are you? So what do you need? From uh, as, as we understand it, you, you've got no preference. It's whoever can get in the soonest. Is that true? You're assuming what? That whoever can get there the soonest is who you would like to go with. Okay. Oh, that's for the kitchen there? Yeah. Okay. It is about a $150 difference between the two. Do we have any experience with either? No. I've I've heard Brian Courier's name, uh, yeah, but I haven't worked with him. And Mitch Shatney, Shatney, is that? Uh, I think he's from Walmart. Uh, I'm trying to think. Of that. Is that Fred? Village Builders. That's Village. Fred, right? I could tell you. Uh, yeah. So, what are you looking for from us tonight? Uh, well, I'm here about the uh, character. Oh. And more about the character. And from this, what they're looking for is kind of an approval to go ahead. And they'll select. With whoever can mobilize them quickly. Right. Okay. Is the board comfortable with that? I said, Duncan, Duncan sent you uh, yeah. an yeah. email yeah. about yeah. Yeah, our, uh, our funds that uh, would normally go to reserve fund. Okay. That's one of the things I've been for. So I don't think we've discussed the kitchen floor here before, have we? I. The ceiling tiles got damaged in a flood. Yes. Uh, uh, plumbing problem. Correct. And the floors, I'm There's assuming, just old. There's actually six ceiling tiles that were ruined mm -hmm. from, the, from the plumbing problem. However, um, to replace those six, they probably wouldn't match. The rest of them are in there. There's only like, I don't count it, maybe 15. I don't think there's even maybe that many kind of that kitchen. That's why we're suggesting replacing all of the whole set of those sets. And the kitchen floor is where it uh, flooded on. Oh, so there was damage to the floor underneath. Yeah, just it was the buckled up. Yeah. Okay. I didn't understand that. Yeah, we weren't sure the extent of the floor damage and uh, we had some hopes that it wouldn't prove to be that bad, but uh, the estimates they've gotten more recently, yeah, they'd like to replace the flooring. So the motion you want is to, and we have the money for these things, these are needed repairs to Holcomb House, so it seems like we, we should do it. But the motion you would want is to accept these, authorize them to go with whoever can get here the quickest. Authorized Dean or, or uh, Brian? Yeah. Um, I think the Historical Society can manage it. Okay, yeah, authorize the Historical Society to use, uh, to go with one of these two quotes for said repairs. Okay. Do a second? Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Do you know when the building's going to be power washed, Dean? 24th, a week from today. Great. Good. That'll be nice. And just for your info, um, I, I forgot, you guys, I think, uh, made a motion for some money for that. And I don't remember the amount, but the cost is going to be less than the anticipated because we have uh, had an offer for the lift to be built in. So that's about a seven hundred dollar item that we're not going to have to spend. Donation to the town from Johnson Hardware. I'm sorry. From Johnson Hardware. Yes. Good. Yeah. That's great. 
So the total cost will probably end up uh, between nine and twelve hundred dollars. Well spent. Yeah. What's the next item. So our next item is uh, the request for reserve funds. So the Historical Society is going to have an estimated uh, $5,000 positive fund balance. So that they believe that they're going to end up, finish the year with a roughly $5,000 uh, in excess of what they had planned on spending. They'd like to commit that money now to three different tasks. Um, and I'm going to cover them. You've got Duncan's letter in front of you. I'm going to cover them in reverse order. Uh, so, in total, they want to cover. They want the five thousand dollars. Most of these are going to be absorbed by uh, the first item. Don't forget the reverse order. I'll just do these in. Uh, the first one is a match to the funds to repair or to upgrade the carriage room, the insulation in the carriage room. So the historical society would like to be able to start using the carriage room uh, both for display and for uh, storage. Uh, to do that they'll need to insulate and heat it to a minimum level. Uh, the thought is this also might help with the uh, apartment upstairs. This is uh, Donnie's apartment. Mm -hmm. um, if you recall, we had pipes freezing a couple of years ago when we had mm -hmm. very cold weather with minimal snow coverage. Uh, the pipes in there froze. So providing some insulation to the walls uh, and some heating upgrades should help fix that in, in the carriage room. To that end, uh, the Historical Society would like to reserve about $2,000 of their funds. Um, for the carriage room. So this is where it kind of dovetails into two issues. One is that they would like the to reserve some of their funds for this purpose. The other part of this is that they would like the town to contribute uh, towards the insulation upgrades in the carriage house. Um, well that's item one. Mm -hmm. Let me get on to the second item. Uh, the second is a to use these as a match for a grant application to develop a strategic plan. It's been sub the grant application has been submitted to the Vermont Community Foundation, um, but they haven't received the grant yet. Um, the estimate is that they would spend about another $2,500 for this. Um, you know that this is uh, I believe the community foundation grant is the, the grant is that you can pay as much as you want but the more you pay the more competitive your grant is um, so they estimated paying 50% of the grant match to make it a, a more competitive offer um, but they don't have a price tag on the facilitator to develop the strategic plan yet. So this is an estimated amount, but they're estimating about 2,500. The third item that they want to reserve the money for is um, the conservation and preservation of historic artifacts and documents. So fixing up and <coughs> repairing documents, just continuing their, their preservation work. Uh, in particular, they've got a few books that they would like to add to uh, the town and Rosemary's uh, when we work with preservationists for uh, some of the town's books. So we've got... Okay, so basically the $5,000 would be divided up amongst... 2000 and uh, and this 5000 is what they are estimating will be left over at the end of the year uh, 2000 towards carriage room investment uh, 
2,500 for the grant application and 1,500 for uh, preserving artifacts. The question I got is, they're estimating about 4,000, a little over 4,000 to do the work in the carriage house. Where does the other 2,000 come from? We're looking, we're looking at our 2,000 to be a match, probably with you guys, because <clears throat> we're figuring it's going to benefit both of our, it's going to benefit you mm -hmm. guys because of the water freezing problem. It will benefit us because it's, we're going to add some heat in there and allow us to use it for um, this place, as well as some storage space. But well, what we really need the heat in, and it's included in here as a red oil heater to be installed by more to keep that room 50 degrees, let's say. <coughs> and, uh, and also in that estimate is um, there are two small windows that have been covered with siding. We're going to have those opened up. Um, and we own a window that we have purchased when we were at Masonic Temple. And we'd like to get that installed in one wall to add light in that room. And in the same wall that's going to be insulated. So and have a profession of insulated, leaving the interior the same as it is. Follow me. I follow you. So the question the, I got. In, in that estimate, there's about three different projects in, the, in that same room. The question I got is have you come with a suggestion on where we're going to get $2,000? It would be tough for us to. I mean, it would have to come out of our uh, building maintenance fund, which okay. is taxed. Uh, with the repairs for this building and hopefully we have money for uh, you know if we can find any way to move on uh, the old mill house or any of our other properties I mean, we have those where you think it's a safe assumption five thousand dollars yes okay if we have to cough up another two thousand, where does it come from? If we take it out of the building, yeah, reserve fund. Reserve fund. Okay. They've started the siding. Have they discovered any anything? <laughs> any uh, surprises yet? Nothing. Really unusual. Uh, we've got rot in places where we expected to find rot. Um, there's less insulation than we thought there was going to be. Uh, you know, but the yeah, the windows are not flash well, so they've been trapping water. Uh, the trim that we have, the the, remember the the sections that run floor to ceiling. Um, at various points around the building, pretty much all of those have trapped water against the siding also. So we're going to assure it will be over budget? I would... I don't know if we're going to be over budget yet. We haven't seen anything that really blows the budget out of the water. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're not, we're not going to be under budget. You know, the, the, this is so far generally in line with what we expected. Yeah. Um, but what we expected was not, not very good. Uh, we are almost certainly not going to do the tower this year. Yeah. Uh, that we think that at this point, I'd say that we're probably going to end up roughly on budget. This being the higher budget amount that we estimated, mm -hmm. we're probably going to hit that target. What do we currently have in that reserve fund? We just put some back into it at the, well not just at the end of last year, we put some back into it, but I couldn't tell you what we have in there right now. It's, you don't have me it's not high. Yeah. Uh, we've been tapping out of it and yeah. we only, we've put back a small fraction of what we've been taking out. 
Вот спорт пою. I'm not comfortable with it. Um, sorry to say, um, I think um, we've put some money into that building this year with the with the siding and with the repairs from the plumbing issue. Um, and we, as we said, we've got we're pretty tapped out with what we need uh, for this building. So that's kind of where I'm coming down at the moment. I think the suggestion is come back to us when we uh, have a little bit more money in our pockets. These, <clears throat> these are estimates, of the, actually quotes that we've got from contractors to do that work. I don't know how you can cut a quote and still get the work done. <clears throat> you know, our night heaters yeah. uh, installed uh, cost seventeen hundred seventy-six dollars. Well, how can you ask the supplier? No. We just don't have the and money. <laughs> we, we just are uncomfortable spending the money right now. Well, <clears throat> I have a, you know, it, it's, it seems like I'm hearing you have, you don't have any money to spend on that building. And I'm wondering where the income from that building goes that you don't have any money to put back into the building. It's, it's basically a wash. The income, and, the income and the expenses are pretty close. What kind of expenses? The, if there's no maintenance expenses in there, what's left for expenses? That, power that costs? Is a wash. Huh? The power, uh, utilities. Um, the loan, well, because we get the loan paid for it. No, the loan's paid off now. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know, I'd have to look well, at I, it. Well, I guess my question is, if if the rental income is just paying for the utilities, then you're giving those people uh, space free, right? Uh, I can't imagine anybody in town who owns rental property uh, operates that kind of a business. Usually, the rental has to pay for the building and maybe make a little income for the for the owner. But if you say utilities are a wash. Um, that means they're getting their rent for free. It, what's the trouble for us is the the two thousand dollars that we would have to take out of our reserve fund. The reserve fund doesn't have a lot of money in it, and we're currently working on this building. We're we're afraid we may go over budget. That's where we're coming from. Well, um, I guess. That's up to you guys, but um, you know we, we just um, we don't feel it's fair that we that we spend the entire cost of doing a project that benefits both you and us. Well, simply simply put, that's about. Come right. back in six months when we are into a new I mean, budget. Well, in six months, this money is going to be gone. It's already going to be in the reserve fund because this is what we're asking mm -hmm. for is money that we have surplus this year be earmarked that we could spend in the next fiscal period. This fiscal period is almost over. So if this rolls over to the reserve fund, uh, then we got to start all over again in okay, the next fiscal year. Let me ask the question, does the board feel comfortable earmarking their budget line item, the $5,000? Generally, I would, as long as you're willing to make that same deal with Johnson Recreation and, and the other groups. Well, you know, but we don't know yet because we're not at the end of the budget. We don't. We're not closing out our books yet. But I mean, in principle, I think absolutely we should be rolling that back to. This their order. line item rolls into the reserve fund, correct? It's automatic. Yeah. Okay. So we wouldn't be doing anything out of what we won't have the money anyways. Mm -hmm. In our general fund. So you keep that money, that money goes back into your reserve fund either way? Yes. But it would not be. If, if you're saying at the end of this fiscal period, if we don't earmark that money, it automatically goes into our reserve fund. Isn't that right? Right. And then you, you have and to only spend it. we have to start all over again 
in order to restart our project because we have to ask you, you guys for any money out of our reserve fund, right? And this is money that we raised. And There's the, no tax money. Anymore. The rain the money we raised from Tuesday Night Live and all the other fundraisers that we found. And it's in, it was in our budget. We just didn't spend as much in our budget as we had budgeted for. So we have a surplus of $5,000. What's the uh, reserve fund restricted for? Do you remember? Is it artifacts, building? I don't remember what the restriction yeah, is. Like but so, Dean, the reserve fund, is that restricted for building artifacts? It's, uh, I don't know what kind of restriction. I think it's capital expenditures. Capital. I think. So, like, uh, we have some money, for example, in our next year's budget um, for uh, conservation artifacts. Mm -hmm. However, um, that program, we don't have enough in our budget to operate that program to the extent that we'd like to. We have a lot of artifacts. We have old uh, hotel registers and that sort of thing that we'd like to get to, you know, preserved by some professionals. Uh, and we would like to spend more next year than we have in our budget for that item. And that's why that's one of these three things. And the only, if it ended up in reserve fund, we probably wouldn't be able to do that for that item because that's not a capital expenditure. If we earmark it, then we can spend it, right? It would be like out of this year's budget being spent next year. That's fine. You've got there in the email that Duncan sent to Brian and Eric and Rosemary. There are three items here. There's care room improvements, there's a, a strategic plan, and there's preservation of documents, all which I'm in favor of doing all of those things. But we've also just appropriated money for repairs to, from the flooding. For, for what? Repairs to the, the plumbing issue that we had oh. this, this winter. That's we have that, four. That's up to you guys, though, because that's well, what, but, expenditure, yeah. But this is what I'm saying, yeah. that also for, um, to have the building power washed. So it's not, it's just a, in my mind, we can't do everything at once. Um, so if you want to earmark some of that money for a couple of these three things, that makes sense to me. But to do them all at once. Um, well, the, the, the match for the, for the um, uh, character, for example, your match could come out of next year's budget to match the money that we're earmarking from this year's budget. This year's almost over. I don't know what your next year's budget looks like, but you would have that option where we might not have. Come. Right? It, it looks like. Come out we'll because come out. we're not going to do it until next year. That's why we like so, it here right now. Come out of which part of next year's budget? That's the question. So you, you mean your 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 share in the budget? I don't know. I don't know your budget. That that. I mean, we could earmark their their current uh, surplus funds for the request. And then revisit it when we're in our next year's budget on whether we would have money. And maybe as we go on through the summer, we see how this building is turning out. We'll know if we have. Money. That's a suggestion. You know, if it didn't work, it it would. May not work, but we would like the funds available so that we can at least make that proposition, you know, that proposal and, and try to get it to work. That is the rollover, you know, I mean, the earmark. That, I mean, if it's earmarked and then we don't end up making an agreement that the, that the project gets done, then it's going to end up as a surplus to next year's budget 
Det er mer slag. Bakken og utsluttfall. Yeah, I mean, I'm all in favor of the, the money that you guys have raised and the money that rolls over. I want it to be spent how you want to spend it. You know, that's how, that's what I want. I'm having a hard time with the $2,000 match is what I'm having a hard time to expand the, the amount of space that you have. Even though I think now, at some point it's a good idea. Part of that match you may have, I don't know what your numbers were, but it seems like I, it seems like I read somewhere that you guys have a, uh, earmark appropriated or something like $1,900 to have a wash job done. So you may have not put in 700 or more mm -hmm. surplus for that job that you, if you had the heart to do it, you may have like put into this match fund. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting your business to you, but I think there will be a surplus from that appropriation. For the wash appropriation. Uh huh. Mm. Wish I had the crystal ball. <laughs> Basically, you um, get caught up with the word. Not really. I kind of came in the okay. tail end of it. Now, some of this was the water damage, correct? We've already taken care of that part of it. Dealt with that. What okay. they're we're on to now is uh, they, they will have $5,000 left over at the end of the year in their budget. It automatically rolls over into their reserve fund unless we earmark it. They would like to earmark that $5,000 for these numbered items. The first item where the contention here is happening is uh, would also require another $2,000 from the town pay for that cost and the concern that's been expressed here is where's that money going to come from right but um, as I said earlier we could earmark the five thousand dollars that they will have at the end of the year it rolls over into reserve fund anyhow but we would just earmark it for these intended purposes and then revisit after we're in our new budget we find out what this is going to cost whether we can afford the extra 2000 or not. So allowing the, uh, earmarking that to be rolled over for, for these projects without uh, making a commitment to the $2,000 match. I, I, I think that. we have to name projects, otherwise we can't roll over $5,000 and, and, and be at will how we're going to spend that. In order to roll it over to use in the next fiscal period, I think it has to be earmarked for use for specific projects. Okay. And that's why we chose these projects. Okay. So I'll move that we earmark any surplus that the Historical Society has in the current fiscal year for um, three projects. Uh, making carriage room improvements um, to match a grant application to develop a strategic plan and for conservation of uh, and preservation of historical artifacts as indicated in Duncan's email from June 12th. A motion on the floor, is there a second? <coughs> yeah, I'll second that. How about that, Donna? That was like a complete motion. Yeah. <laughs> you do never <that> guess. <laughs> motion and a second on the floor. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Thank I wasn't here for the whole thing, so I'm not going to vote one way or another. So we'll now go over to Howard. We'll go back to Tuesday Night Live. We skipped over you. Okay. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Okay, I'll be brief. Um, so uh, I'm here at the behalf of uh, Tuesday Night Live uh, committee. Um, I have done. I, I went looking for uh, dumpster quotes or <laughs> two small boxes uh, to go behind the bandstand. Um, I called three places. Two of them said they weren't interested because the loads are going to be too small, and they don't. You know, they make money when they pick them up. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, but I, I did get a quote from Casella who said that if they pick them up every two weeks, um, they, it's 131 bucks a month. So it's 260, 262 total for the duration, just so you know. Um, the question the committee has asked me to bring to you is how do you feel about passing the bucket again? I feel whatever the committee wants to do is the best thing to do in that situation. <laughs> if you guys feel like it's wise to pass the bucket, pass the bucket. Okay. All right. There was some talk about no buckets. Well, uh, two years ago, uh, there was a question of, of passing the Competing uh, buckets. Competing <laughs> buckets. Uh, the bandstand was looking for money, and so was TNL. So, uh, uh, so Cal whined about it, and we had, uh, and, and you know, and, and the select board uh, said, "That's enough of that." So, that that's the history. Uh, and um, so, what we're what we're suggesting, what the committee is suggesting, I want to make this as neutral as possible, so you don't know where I stand. <laughs> uh, uh, it, what the committee is suggesting that uh, that we revisit this, and uh, should we feel the need to pass the bucket? My hunt, my personal, my personal hunch is that we are going to not need to do that this week. But that's just my personal hunch, and I have no true basis for that hunch, other than the fact that Rosemary. As I walked in the door, it said that we just got seven hundred and fifty dollars in in sponsorship uh, okay. today. So, so yeah. we're all the time. But I guess we would like the uh, the committee would like the uh, like the permission from the select board to do that if it's necessary. Part of this came up because the discussion was: should we do the GoFundMe campaign yeah. or? not or do this past the bucket thing the committee feels like you know go the gofundme is it's a one-time sh shot you can't keep having gofundme right. <laughs> campaigns so to save that chip for when it's needed they prefer to do the you know should something big come up in the future they'd like to save that the gofundme option for that and uh do the pass the bucket instead. What she said. Yes. So with the added vendor fees this year, do you anticipate you would need the you know, pass the bucket? Don't know. Don't know. I mean we we're we, we have to we're spending a bucket of money on sound gear okay. this year. Yeah. And uh, because we were left without enough to do the job. Okay. So um, that's I mean, right off the best twenty five hundred bucks at the at, at, at the start of the year. Uh, <clears throat> I don't quite know where that stands in terms of. I mean, again, I think we're going to be okay, but I don't know that for sure one way or the other. We just like to have the bucket in our pocket mm -hmm. to mix metaphors. I agree with what I said. You know, leave it to committee. Okay. So I guess we better have a motion because board had taken a. Position. That's right. Some years prior. Yeah, I think before, like years prior, we didn't have the wisdom of a committee. We just had a couple of guys who had, you know, different interests. And this time we have a committee that can really. I love, I love the use of your word wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got power. I know. Well, there's a lot of wisdom. Well, there's there's a, lot of wisdom. So there's a lot of wisdom. It's a great group. It is a good committee. It's a great, it's a great question group. about it. I, that's the best committee I've ever been a part of. Well, I'll go from the select board. Yes, come on. Motion to allow the Tuesday Night Live committee to pass a bucket. Should they, should they so please? Motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. And um, two other things, very quickly. Uh, the question arose actually this very afternoon. Insofar as the bands are paid out of town with a, with a, with a town check. Do we need to do a W-9 for the bands? In my humble opinion, we do not because they are independent contractors. If they get paid over $600. Over 600 bucks. 
So there may be one or maybe only one item this year that's going to be back. Yeah, because they need the 1099 if they get over the Okay, I will pass that along. No need for you guys to get involved in that. It's the fence, we can talk about it. And then the last thing is, where's the jam water on the Legion, Legion Field? Huh? Can we have water down there? I just want to water plants and the bandstand. Can you follow up? I will. <laughs> it should be. You said that to me too. I know. Uh, it was last week. It's too late. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it would be wonderful if we could just have, you know, put a lock on it and give me a key so at least I can fill a water can and go down and water plants. I mean, I don't care if we don't drink it. We, we have a spigot there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We'll get you water. Thank you. If it has to be the fire engine, or we'll get you water. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's all. That's all I have. Perfect. Thank you. I told you. Thank that. you. Yeah, I just Thank want to say you. that group is doing very, very well. It is great. Oh, oh, is very much again. One more quick thing. I just did a, uh, a two-page, one and a half page uh, talking points, uh, elucidating all the things we've done, and I sent it off to Sula Ring this afternoon. So we should be seeing that in the paper. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Because the world is wondering, where are you guys? Oh, wow. Right. Where's the flyer? Yeah. And the flyers, are, yeah, and the posters in the works. Yeah. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you, Howard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amy? Amy, you're you got the floor. <laughs> Go right up there. Or just stand where you are. Stand where you are. Okay. You need this? My name is Amy Thompson. I live in East Johnson, and I would like to know why the street lights have been shut off. As a budget savings item. But that is a dangerous corner. The traffic is heavy. And we've had the lights there forever. Or I've lived there for 68 years. And we've always had lights. And I never knew the town or the village to operate in the red because of those lights. I consider them a measure of safety, especially since the new bridges are there, that we have more heavy traffic that travels faster. And we do have a lot of foot traffic. I wish you would reconsider that and have those lights back on in East Johnson for safety reasons. Amy, one light or all of the lights? Well, they're, they're necessary at that intersection. They're necessary across the bridges. You know. I, I can't speak about any specific one, uh, but I spoke to the lady across the street and she thought the ones on the bridges were necessary. And certainly at the intersection of the Route 100C and Sinclair Road, well, they miss that turn and then they plow up onto my lawn. I think we need lights on that corner. Casey? Um, something I'll add quickly in support of Amy's request is that the V-Trans engineers were at our place last week uh, looking at drainage and a bunch of other safety things. And they said, boy, we hate the, the inadequate sight line of, for, if you try to enter 100C going toward the village from the mill side, mm -hmm. Um, you know, they, is it, the, you know, the bridge your, at your place, uh, particularly from that direction, have very inadequate sight line. It's not long enough. And, um, yeah, I mean, they, they would echo the safety issue, and we can attest to the increased speed and increased Could you stuff. convert to LED sensei? I there are. is an energy saving. Uh, 
I think I think I think those are the sodium. Oh, the Although the sodium, sodium lamps, but when they were turned off, which uses a lot more energy than right. LEDs do. I mean, I would think that a 50 watt LED would light up. It would be a pretty, okay. pretty bright light over there, which is not much. But I don't know. Or the spot? Lights there forever. Probably since 1935. <laughs> I remember slight down Sinclair Road with all those lights back before they put pavement and dirt on there. We used to slide down that road from the top of the hill. On purpose, sir? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Heck, we used to start at the bar. Fair time, fair. Oh, really? Bar. Come around, around the corner. The bar, head for the highway. You slow down. That's good. Going around that flag spot. Then you go down the hill. I'm too close. Take a hard to left turn. Head down the road. Recuse yourself. It's weird. Wouldn't hurt for a light on the corner. But the traffic is heavy now in the field. The Chittenden County waste trucks all go up on that road. Yeah. We have a lot of I move we put a light traffic. on the corner, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion to put a light on the corner. Do we have a second? Second. We have a well, second. I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to have to. Yeah. Wherever you consider that. Would you like us to vote? Yeah, go ahead, buddy. Yeah. Okay. You're going to vote, Neil. Say yes, Amy. <laughs> Amy. Say yes. Say yes. Yes. All right, then. <laughs> Stop. All those in favor, uh, hold them. Do we have discussion? Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, I am 99 years oh, old. On, wow. I believe I'm the oldest resident living in Johnson that was born locally. Yay. We know that. <laughs> Um, can we look into the LED option? That's I don't know what that involves, but you know, it's an idea. Okay. Probably the village. They used to have them. They, they, we'll they, ask them. There's always vendors at uh, town fair and some of the other events. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? I think we're going to get one back. No matter what it is, it's not going to be that much. Before we have a okay, all, the, <laughs> all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations, you got a light bulb. Okay, you got a light bulb. Thank you, Thank Amy. You. Thank well, you for coming in. Thanks. Thanks. I think it is a worthy cause. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. I'm going to get her home now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Safe travels home. Oh yeah. Oh, skateboard or skate park? Oh, trash club collaboration. Shred, eat shred, eat shred, 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 Congratulations on being old enough now to get a lifetime achievement award. <laughs> Does that mean my wife's over? No, 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 it, just no it just means you're, you're a big boy now. Awesome. As fellow lifetime achievement. As fellow lifetime achievement. Thank you. Were you were old enough before. Yes, now I am. No, Thank not. you. That's funny. Okay, so uh, I know you want to hear about the folks, the two old men, young men that we hired. They are Jacob Eigelinger and Billy Cashin, respectively the president and treasurer of the Shred Club. Um, Ryan saw their resumes. Of, I, yep, I actually have them here, but they have uh, Social Security and other identifying information, okay, so yeah. we can't copy um, and share them. I, I talked to both those men, young men, you know, a good couple of handful of times between time I met them in the spring when they applied um, and you know they came with the very high recommendation of the faculty member uh, who's the advisor to the Shred Club. Um, Andrew? Andrew? Andrew uh, LaFrance. Yeah. yeah LaFrance. Uh, you know they organized, uh, the, well the club but under their leadership organized that event at the holiday festival and so forth. Um, and their resume 
resumes. I mean, Billy, Billy is majoring in accounting. Jacob is measuring, or they call it area of concentration. And I've forgotten. I don't, I don't think I know, actually. I don't, it wasn't on the resume. I've forgotten. Maybe ecology something, outdoor something. Anyway, um, their references all checked out fine. Uh, we interviewed them at a committee meeting last month, and this month, this month. Uh, and the committee had, a couple of committee members had forgotten that it was going to be a shared position, but that we're using both boys. And they have the second one left and said, do we have to choose? We choose. I said, you don't have to choose. <laughs> so they're pretty, pretty tickled. And um, we're now in that fun period where it's the transition from everybody's happy, they're hired, etc. And the reality of, well, I've got my second job, and da, 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 and I'm saying, like, okay, and here's the task list, and they're, oh, they're meeting it. Here's, here's the actual, you know, ap here's the actual absolute things you must do, here are the priorities, and we're working it out. So it, it's fine. Uh, and any questions? Questions from the board? Sounds good. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yes. Good. It's Thank fine. You. And then I think related to that, uh, skate park wise, is the uh, the noise waiver. Yeah, for this wonderful event that I hope you all come to. Yes. Thank you. It, it will be posted, I believe, on the town website, the flyer. End of June, June 29th, rain date, Sunday. Seven piece band on Saturday. Funk Shui <laughs> and uh, DJ, a a DJ on the rain date if there's rain. Uh, food, uh, let's see, bratwurst and cookies from Laraway. Hot dogs, largely, mostly donated by various supermarkets. Um, uh, events and activities organized by the Shred Club guys for bike and skateboard stuff uh, with the help of actually Howard Duchasik of Waterville of Parker and Stearns. You know, he was, mm -hmm. His son, Tyler, is a mountain biker and he's coming to help also. Um, and we're advertising, doing paid advertising for the first time on Front Porch next week. Oh, wow. So you know, all of Oil County will see you know, the info. And it's on our Facebook page. And what did that cost? Just for uh, uh, for front porch. Uh, for for the first time, ad you get a, some some sort of discount. Yeah. Which I think when they say discount, they mean they run it more often. It's not that it costs you less. <laughs> I think. And plus, there's a, a little bit of initial rent discount for towns and nonprofits, and you know we're a town. So long and short for. 33,000 ads, it's $330. And it reaches the entire county twice. You could spread it over two weeks, or we wanted to condense it into the one week. Uh, but we got a mini grant uh, for um, people for bikes, specifically for the event. And so for the first time, we thought, let's advertise. Cool. So That's reasonable, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think it's a huge amount of money. So <laughs> like some, it's a gift. It's to well, you can't, you, yeah, it's not bad for what it reaches. If I, I'd love to be able to, frankly, have tailored it for less money, but you can't. So. Right, still not that bad. Yeah. Well, right. yeah. Are we going to request for a noise ordinance? We can deny, we can approve, we can approve the condition. It's one to five, Saturday and or Sunday. Well, not and, Saturday or Sunday. Motion to approve. No conditions. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Motion, second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those aye. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank okay. you. Thank you. One more quick thing. I move my boat tomorrow morning. It's 9 o'clock.
Really? Oh, so if you're interested in watching something really stupid running down the highway, <laughs> is it going to hit water? In, in, a, in a week. In a week? But we're going to have to show it tomorrow. I don't think it's that stupid hour. Thank you. It's a beautiful <laughs> oh. When it goes down Main Street, are you going to be like on the prow with a white hat on? No, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the figure. <laughs> Why didn't you do it on Memorial Day? I, yeah, I should have. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that's what's happening. So Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Let's skip ahead to Scott so he doesn't have to stay all night. Oh, to sure. Here they got the 19-20 contracts on. Second. A motion second. Any discussion? This is no surprise anyway. We knew. No, this was yeah. voted on it. Right. Our budget. Yeah, it's no problem. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Also, I have one other question. Do you know how long our property tax exemption is for? It's expired. Okay. I don't have to know for. Is that the, the five-year thing? Is that the five yeah. or is it a ten-year one? I don't remember. Yeah, we'll have to get check and get back to yeah, you. Yeah, if you could let us know, it's hard to believe, but we're starting to look at the next budget. Yeah. What are we in the last one? There you are. And whatever you want to do on that, if you want to charge us property taxes, we're just going to bill you back. <laughs> but. As a hint, we get charged in other towns and that uh, gets shared by well, it's true. It would be five towns. So, so everybody get in here for me, but you'd be saving yourself a little money by charging us. You're on camera, by the way. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Right. No, we I'm would only pay, was it thirty nine percent of it? Thirty nine percent of it. Yeah. Yes. Until we go through the next census. Duly noted. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. I guess we're back into your report. Uh, so, uh, while we're doing contracts, I've got... Is it interesting? <laughs> Super. <laughs> I've got the sheriff's contract for us. So, this is... Two contracts, one for patrol and one for communications. Uh, these are the same numbers that were approved, and this is a uh, board signature. Okay. So I guess we all need a motion if we've already approved the budget. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. Are we going to send this to the sheriff? Yeah. <laughs> Not going to lose it this year? All right, well, that's going around. We did NEMS. The next one is uh, LCPC is due for reappointment. Uh, Duncan is the town's representative on uh, LCPC and has requested to be reappointed. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor, signify the second one. Aye. Those opposed? All right. I said it. Congratulations, Duncan. <laughs> uh, Green Mountain Fund. Uh, Johnson Recreation applied for a grant to the Green Mountain Fund for refurbishment of the softball field. Um, they were awarded the grant. I have this listed as an action item, but it's really going to be information. At this point, the um, what they have sent in for us for paperwork, which I believe to be the extent of the paperwork we're receiving on this grant, uh, doesn't need a board signature. And I've, you know, that it just needs the administrator's approval. Next, we've got a valley uh, facility use for Valley Bike Tours. So this is uh, Jim Rose uh, using the uh, parking area in front of the old mill building uh, for the electric bike tours. And as he's been doing in the years past. Um, the, there's not much change to this. Um, he does add a note that he would like to explore leaving the trailer overnight on Friday nights when necessary. So not, a, not permanently, not every time, but he's interested in talking about it. Um, you know, we're still arranging that conversation with Brian and Troy, because uh, I want them to weigh in before we make any kind of decision on that. I just want to make sure that um, Valley Bike Tours will assume all liability for that trailer if it's left overnight. Yeah, yeah that's the other, another part of our concerns is that it, uh, yeah, it, it, we don't want any liability for the trailer. On board signature? Uh, no, there's a representative. Okay. What's board for you? Motion to authorize Eric to sign the. Uh, Valley Bike Tours facility use. Any conditions request? None last year, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Good Second. motion. You have a second? Second. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All-Star Baseball uh, didn't get their facility use request in yet, but I've talked to uh, Heather as our rec coordinator about it. She's pretty confident that, um, assuming that they want the same time that they wanted previously, uh, we can accommodate them on our uh, baseball schedule. So I'd like, their games start, I think, next week. They start quite soon. Uh, so I would like the board to authorize either myself or Eric to come in and sign that when it's available. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Uh, comments on the Green Mountain Power Transmission Lines. So I've got a couple copies of this packet passed down. Is this one we get emailed to us? You should also receive it by email. Yeah. Um, we have the option of commenting on how this fits with uh, the town and regional plan. Um, we're not required to comment on it. Can we send it? Through our planning commission? Our planning commission's been included on the email. Okay. Did they? And, and then they didn't provide comment. I don't know. Same thing. It's, it's an improvement, so really, what's there really to comment on? I don't know. <laughs> the village has been included on it also. Uh, they might have more of a stake than we do, but it's. So we can look at this and if we have comments, comment on it at the next meeting? Uh, not the next meeting, but you can send comments by email 
to myself and I'll communicate those through the Memorial County Planning Commission. You know, we can't, we won't have another opportunity to discuss it together, but you can send me your individual comments. Well, 45 days would, I mean, uh, would 45 days from June 4th would, uh, anyway, it doesn't. Did you have if some I have comments, I'll email you. Yeah. It, it may be, I might have, uh, Thanks for coming in. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. It's dark out when we're walking. So. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Did you find anything controversial enough? <laughs> yes. A couple things, yeah. <laughs> Lights. Good. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, I might have it mixed up with when LCPC's board meeting is that this is on their agenda. Oh. Uh, so we may actually have a longer comment period. Uh, than what lines up with their calendar. You have some concerns, Matt? Nope. No, just they're asking for a comment, and it's just I'm without having the opportunity to to read through it. I'm not going to have any comment. And okay. Why don't you take it with you? And oh yeah. <laughs> Study it in good shape. <laughs> okay. It is interesting. Go right through my property. Can I build it. You know, I had, uh, I woke up a couple weeks ago at our new house. There was a crew in our backyard, and it was uh, archaeologists w working for Green, Green Mountain Power. Yeah. Uh, that this will, the upgraded lines will, well, they go through my property now, but they'll continue to go through the property. and. There'll be a, some work done, and the state required them to do an archaeological report. Yeah. And they had arranged it with the previous owner of the property, so uh, oh. <laughs> I had no idea they were coming. Funny. On call. So you've got a very pretty sparse sheet here, but this lays out kind of the work that I did with Brian about estimating on our potential cost savings with the changes to on-call, our minimum call-out times, and the on-call pay. So, uh, the short version is, you know, uh, counted up, using this last year as an example, counted up the amount of times that the crew went out for plowing and sanding, how many times we went out for uh, salting, just sanding, and summertime call-outs. Right now our minimum call-out is four hours, so I counted for determining the current cost, I counted each incident, no matter what its purpose, as four-hour call-out. Realistically, uh, the times are not always going to take four hours, and they will usually take less than four hours. So. For the current, or the proposed call out times that the uh, highway department agreed to, I estimated the times at four hours for plowing and sanding, three hours for salting, two and a half hours for sanding, and two hours for uh, summer. And it, for summer, you know, that, that should be a pretty good estimate. Just on a weekly basis. Uh, the number of times called out, the hours per instance is not really wait, it's however often they get called out. Thank you. Uh, totaling those up, our current costs would be a little over 58,000, and under the new system, they'd be around 50,000. So we're, we'd save about $8,000. Um, so if we're saving money, it means they're making less money. This gets into, mm -hmm. it's difficult to determine. They are making less money than they used to. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, compared to this current year, they really wouldn't be making 
significantly less under this scheme because Brian has fully implemented the program to send people home after they've worked their aid, except in you know more extreme cases where he knows he's going to have to mm -hmm. he's going to need them for more than eight hours. Right now they're starting at six and skipping lunch and getting done at, at two. Yeah. So I mean they like that the whole system, but this is what they agreed to. Uh, Give it to them. Well I, well, I mean, how can we argue against it if it's going to save us money? That's right. Well, that's the change in the column system. Right. That's half the equation. That's their concession. That's their concession. But what they're asking for is a $15,000 benefit. Right. So $200 for three members each week for six months. So we would have... Um, that would cost us uh, $15,000, a little over. So that's leaving us a, a net of, we've got to come up with $7,000 from somewhere. Okay, so this isn't saving us money. No, it's Not in total. Yeah, in total. Their concession is saving us money. And their request costs us a little bit more over our current system. It's somewhat, it's not restoring things all the way back to when we weren't, when we were sending people home, or when we were not sending people home, uh, and everybody worked more overtime. Uh, this is not rising to that level of compensation, but it's somewhere in between the two. Um, so if we did the three, the five months, the net cost to the town would be additional 5,000. Right. A little less. So I took the liberty of meeting with the guys uh, to discuss this when we ran the numbers here. The board had indicated that they were supportive of this as long as it was you know, reasonably affordable. I took the 15,000 to be probably outside of, of the board's comfort zone uh, and approached the guys about what can we do for an alternative to save the town a little bit of money um, and make this a little bit more palatable? The compromise that we came up with was uh, five months. Even this past winter, we really weren't on for more than five months. It, we worked some overtime in what was mud season but we really didn't have on call that much. We think that if we went from the middle of November to the middle of April, instead of the beginning of November to the end of April, that'll shave a month off of our winter hours and four weeks off of our $200 per week. So, so when you say five months, <coughs> That could be uh, start halfway through a month. That's the idea, is that for my calculation, when I say five months, I really mean uh, 22 weeks. So that's what we should say, the 22 weeks. Instead yeah. Of, okay, yeah. Because I wouldn't want to get the impression that they get the whole month. No. Even though we may only have snow the last two weeks. Or we would like we do now we start on call or we start our winter hours on november 1st and end them april 30th to 31st um but at, and we would just be condensing that a little bit that we would start on you know for example you know we i'd probably coordinate with rosemary about to start the second pay period in uh, November and and the second day period in April, uh, but I'm assuming that that would be easier for you to calculate for payroll. Um, but it would be the same thing that it may not be snowing yet, but at this point we are ready for snow, and we're ready for winter driving conditions. Um, and that's. 
that's really how we've been doing it. That's when the guys take home their pagers, when they, you know, are now, you know, ready for on call at any time. Mm -hmm. Comments, concerns, questions? So the, the, the statement from the meeting and, and the message from the meeting when um, the guys came in was that what they're, con what they're offering for a concession is pretty much more or less equal to what they're asking for for a benefit. In running these numbers, um, they're asking for a benefit of around $13,200 for a concession of about $7,800. So it's not really, um, so if we want to stick to that, what, what they were asking for was something of equal comparable value. Um, I, I would go with the plan, but um, not at $200 per week um, or per weekend. I would put it at $120, and maybe you could check my math on this, but if it's $120, that turns it into a benefit of, an overall benefit of $7,920, which is comparable to what they're conceding. But they said they were going to do away with the minimum call-out business too, correct? That's, that's they what are, but saves us seventy eight hundred dollars. When they, with that, the tasks take a certain amount of time. They usually take less than four hours, which is their current minimum call-out. But even if we don't have a minimum call-out, we should expect that the task will take, you know, about four hours for plowing, three hours for salt, two and a half for sanding, and about two for. Okay. most issues in the summer. I, I agree with Nat because mm -hmm. the gist of the whole thing was that it was going to be a wash. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what it was, and it's not a wash. And so your point is well taken about $120 would be a wash. I think so. I'd be more comfortable if Brian would check my math on yeah. that, but I think that's uh, 120 60% of what they're asking. It's 60% of the 200. So if they agreed with the figures that you have here, uh, both sides agreed, then it's easy to bargain that $120 would be more appropriate than $200. And $120 for being on call, I mean, from, what's, what's the village getting for being on call? It's more than that. It's more than that? Well, there goes that point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised, no. How much more? Closer to the 200. Mm. Yeah, but they're qualified line. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who and they get they, their base salary is higher already because of that. Right. You, you're not, not an really apples to apples, apples, apples. apples. No. Not an apples to apples. No. I, I think we need to go back and show them the figures. Uh, you could tweak them up. Uh, it's obvious you just made kind of a cursory uh, figures. And, Brian, you tighten them up a little bit and come back to us, I would think. Or go to them. Sure. That's a good point. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so my suggestion, I thought that the meeting we had with everybody here was quite productive. Um, my suggestion might be that we, we might do that again at our July 1st meeting. Uh, schedule a little bit of time with them board's interested, I think they might be interested. There's the tax rate, what was the other thing that's coming in? Uh, the development of the, with the community health project. Uh, it would be nice for us to get an update from Cheslov and the State Department of Health. And you know, we can help them communicate with our residents and uh, kind of make sure a clear message gets out. How many people, how much time? It's something we have to work on a little bit, but I don't I have would a... expect the tables to be in. Yep. Okay. That could be a fairly lengthy discussion. Board's thoughts on July 1st? 
Do you want to invite the Iowa guys in? And why are you suggesting that, Brian? Because you feel like... Uh, I, I think that they... I can go back with 120 or I can make any other offer, but I would like for us to realize savings on this. We want to implement the plan early in the year. Oh yeah, quicker the better. Uh, because if we're going to realize savings on this and pay for it, yeah. then that means we need to avoid having, uh, avoid using the four hour minimum call out. Uh, if we're gonna find the money to save to pay for this and make it a watch. Mm -hmm. So we need that to start as close as possible to the first of the year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so having it go back and forth between the two boards is, doesn't help that goal too much. Well, who knows, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt to ask. And yep. you could, as I mentioned earlier, to point out that their main discussion from their main uh, spokesman was that uh, it was going to be kind of an even Stephen. And uh, it's obvious that it's not, and uh, our figures would be easily justified. And so if they're in good faith, want to do as they said, then $120 would not be unreasonable. When you uh, figure out what basically is a wash. Can you send that out to the board? Sure. And then bring it back to the employees? Yeah, I'll, I'll make up another copy of this with, you know. So that we know exactly what, you know, is it 120, is it 130, is it 110? Yeah. What is it? It would be, you know, because there might be some wiggle room that we might want to, we'd be comfortable going over, but not to the good of 5,000 or We're trying to be reasonable right. uh, on this. Yep. But the point is, that, like I mentioned a couple of meetings ago, that this was never, they knew going into their job what the situation was. And there was nothing ever mentioned about on call pay or any of that stuff, and they accepted the job the way it was. Um, they did talk about that CDLs are very valuable and they could go other places and all this other stuff, but I think that we're trying to be reasonable and I think they they should be reasonable also. All right, so I will first suggest, I'll work up a, a, a break-even price, make that as a suggestion, um, share it with both boards and if that's not accepted then I'll start to work on can we make time in July to invite them. I don't even like the word suggestion to tell you the truth. I, I, I like the facts and figures and this is what we can live with and it's no no suggestion. You know it's it is, it is what it is and we have to live within our budget and uh, they should too. And, and part of the problem is this is coming in when we're going into a new budget that we didn't budget for. Right. And it's so. very hard for us to absorb a huge chunk without it as part of our budget. Yeah. They were very clear at that meeting they, yeah. that, that what they were cons offering as concession was roughly, roughly comparable to the benefit that they were asking for. So I think granting them a comparable benefit is absolutely um, what I'm willing to do, but not roughly double it or get, you know, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't add up. So yeah, we're offering them something very, pretty much what they asked for. Yeah. Okay. Vacancies on a rec committee. Yes. Are you working on today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, just to go back to March, actually, in our appointment meeting, uh, we never actually formally appointed anyone to the rec committee this past year because it's been up in, in flux. But we have had people doing the work, as, as always. Um, 
our chair, uh, Carrie O'Halloran, has been doing an exceptional job, um, is uh, stepping down. Um, and so is uh, Hillary uh, Hoag. Uh, oh. um, she's uh, uh, both feeling like it's time for them to step down. Uh, Laura Whitehill is also going to be stepping down. So um, active members on the committee, unofficially even, are uh, Michelle Boyton and myself. And of course, uh, Heather, who continues to um, do the lion's share of the work. Um, she's paid for eight hours, but I know she does a lot more than that. Um, so we're just, we're, we're basically, uh, we need volunteers. Um, I've, thanks to Kyle, who gave me a bunch of suggestions. I've been talking to some folks with a little bit of interest, a few people who might be interested, kind of um, tentatively, but um, we're working the, working the phones hard to try and get members to, to revive it. It's a really exciting time, I think. And it's gonna be an exciting time to be on the right committee because we have, are hiring someone this coming month um, to be the right coordinator to support the work of the group. Um, and it'll be exciting to have some new blood in there, but we gotta beat the bushes. So if anybody knows of anyone, um, send them my way. I've, I've seen this happen quite a few times over the years. Yep. And the rec committee will go down to where it, like one person there where it almost dies. Yep. And that re energizes a new group of people. Yep. Because they got their little Johnny and their little Susie that they want on all the ball games and ski clubs and everything else. So they they jump in. So you know there will be new people that step up. It's just you gotta well, let them know that the rec committee it's up. might not be here if, if somebody doesn't We've got to beat the bushes to yeah. to get them with that. So, I mean, front porch forum's a good place to start. Yeah, I did that. Yep, I've yeah. done that. Facebook, uh, and I'm just emailing people blindly who have uh, kids, uh, Johnson Elementary School age, and and others uh, who, who might be interested. So, okay. please uh, send suggestions my way. That um, leads. To, can I go to my yep. other yep. rec item? I put it right here. Um, Heather has some ideas for um, Mill Park. Uh, number one is she, well, she's suggesting that we purchase a playground off of Craigslist for $3,000 for Mill Park. Um, Heather has a great track record with doing this, finding great deals on playgrounds um, and, and relocating them into our parks. And that works, that has worked really well. Um, my reluctance to it, my feedback to her was that I think if we're going to spend three thousand dollars, we should spend it at the Trailhead building, um, because it's kind of sad looking right now, and with a little bit of work, it could look really awesome. And a lot, it, we get a lot of traffic through that. People visiting mm -hmm. Johnson, um, and she liked that idea too. And so I think she wanted to do both projects. Um, so she's asking for an allocation. I don't even know what we have of reserve funds and playground, if there's any playground funds left over. But she's asking for money out of that reserve budget. Um, there are playground money left over, but I don't remember what it is. From the money that was raised? Dorley, ages There's ago. a little bit, not a whole lot. A few bucks. Yeah. Um, one easy thing that we can do at Mill Park, I think, is just ask the mowers to mow like the entryway to Mill Park all the way around the um, the trailhead building. If they can just expand the area that they mow by that much, I, I think that would be a huge improvement. Um, but she's also asking for, and these are things that I really think should happen, I just, my, my reluctance is we don't have a rec committee right now to back up the recommendation. Um, take down brush, falling trees, we can do that. Um, move the, moving the picnic table away from the portal at further out of the trail, away from the trailhead facility would require a little bit of fill be brought in. Um, 
We take down a brush. That would be pretty much it, actually. Trailhead. There's some additional signage. People, she was there this past weekend asking people, you know, what they thought of the place. And they're like, well, we had no idea there was a portal light around here. You know, the portal light's facing away from. So some signage indicating that there's water available. Water's huge, actually, to bikers on the trail. And if people realized that there was water right there, that would attract a lot, actually really attract a lot more bikers, cyclists. Um, so I don't know. I just got this request from her this afternoon. I'm not really sure what to what to make of it. So I discussed these with Heather. Thanks. On uh, Thursday, and, and um, yeah, the, a couple of these, the signage we should be able to afford that. The that'll be relatively low cost. Mm -hmm. um, the fill and relocating the picnic table really have to investigate that a little bit to yeah. see how practical and feasible that is. Um, the mowing, I don't know what the cost associated with that will be. I can't imagine it'll be too high since they're already mobilized for that location and we're just... It's not a lot more area. We're adding a couple of yards to them that like, it's really small compared to what they're already doing. So I think the cost is going to be quite low. Um, and one you didn't mention that she talked to me about is a new bike rack. Uh, apparently the bike rack that oh, okay. is there gets moved frequently. Uh, it's not secured to anything, so we either need to... It would be nice if we at some point got either a stake or something to help secure it, or a heavier one that just gets moved less often. Uh, but I think we can start moving on a few of these at least at relatively low cost. For the playground, what, what's that idea specifically? Um, I just got a text message on the. Uh, like, in addition to what's already there, or something. It's. Particular? I mean, the yeah, the pie in the sky for that park is that we have a third playground element. It's something that we've been yeah. discussing for quite a long time. And this would be a third playground element. It looks similar to the, um, oh, yeah. to, <laughs> it's not your favorite kind no, of playground. It's not. Um, but it looks similar to the, the toddler playground. It's rotomolded molded plastic. It's very durable. Um, that is in Legion Field. Um, and they're very expensive. And you get you know, 3,000 boxes uh, inexpensive for that sort of uh, Thing. Um, she would, and, you know, this is in Clifton Park, New York, but Heather has a, you know, she's amazing at finding people to pick these things up. And she's like Becca with the gymnastic yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. She, uh, she can make it work for really low cost. So okay. that's the idea there. I, um, it, as I said, I, yeah. I'm kind of reluctant on it, but she, it's Heather, and, you know, she deserves a hearing on it. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the uh, the adding yeah, is that anything that we have to go through the Act 250? I think they're going to. It's something I would want to talk to them about. It's not the kind of thing I would do without uh, reaching out. Our coordinator has our property has changed hands again for our state coordinator. Uh, and I'm yet to try and get a hold of the new. Okay. Uh, Figure out who it is. I did learn who it is, uh, and they were out of office, but they're back on, they're back as of today, and I, I just hadn't had time to call again. Um, so the, we'll be working with them about getting that, uh, about, we work with them about what we would need to do about bringing Phil in. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be okay. We're generally fine adding material. Yeah. They're mostly concerned with removing material. I think you're right. But it is the kind of thing where I wouldn't do it without talking to them. Um, in general, I try to let them know any uh, anything we're doing other than routine maintenance. Uh, and it's almost always you're fine to worry about it, but I, ne I don't want to get caught out that we've you know, done something to, you know. It's always good to have an email saying it's okay. Yeah. 
you know, we don't want to get caught up saying that we're d disturbing toxic soils in an area where we're having children play. Uh, so we're very cautious about any work we do inside the park. But you said you were going to follow up on the sign and some of those. Yeah. Check off a few of those things anyhow. In the mowing, it's going to be in the mowing. The mowing will be yeah. very easy. Um, and the signs are, you know, we just need to go out and take a couple pictures of the thing and see what signs are there now. Um, and then, then we'll be able to make a thought about how we want to improve it. We do have a grant for signs from uh, uh, Rise VT oh. uh, for rail trail signs. So we could work these mm -hmm. together. Okay, anything else? Is that it? Yeah, I mean, yes. Uh, so are we going to wait about the playground thing? That's up to you guys. I throw it out there for your feedback. I've given like didn't feedback. Feedback. like we had much money. I think we should wait. I think we have reserve funds. We, should, but we anyway. have reserve funds. Yeah. That could be. Really I would. I would love to see some um, maintenance done on the stuff that's currently there. Yeah. Because Michael noticed when he brought the girls the other day, nails are starting to stick out and things are starting to pop off. So. Um, yeah. Of the. Maybe, of the ship oh, and the yeah. and the and some stuff on the. Uh, on the train. The train. I know Heather's trying to get someone out there to yeah, work on that. Yeah. yeah, we've been trying to okay. pin down a contractor to do work on the pirate ship. I know the, the I don't know well enough to describe the part, but the, yeah, there's a the prominent plan. broken piece on the, uh, yeah. the pirate ship. Uh, I wasn't aware of anything on the train, so I'll share that. I think it's just nails are starting to pop up a little bit. And we catch on it or yeah yeah they yeah. so just kind of overall someone needs to ring a hammer and just yeah which we keep meaning to <laughs> okay evergreen ledge all right so we have the deed for the sale to uh, don and lucille sergeant uh, he has paid his deposit. Oh my gosh. Done, done deal. It's done as soon as we sign it over to him. What's the board's pleasure? Will we do it? And then we move that like bunch or anything? <laughs> I think we have. We moved the concept, I guess. We yeah. moved the concept and we moved, we, uh, we signed, uh, a sales agreement with him that we would sell it as soon as we were able to. We're able, we're selling it. I'll second Mike's motion to sell this cemetery plot to Don and Lucille Sargent. Any discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. You got the before the horse. I'll say nay. I want it done. I want it done. Poor guy. She was. And on the rumor mill, it's apparently his brother now is looking at some additional plots on the same area. Uh, and give that to Rosemary to enterprise. Older brother. Put the date. Older brother. You gonna put the date in there? Oh, yeah, we the you can add the date. Make sure you add the date. Thank you. There. White Industrial Park. We finally did that. Uh, no real updates on the Light Industrial Park. I'm hoping to have the EDA grant out uh, by the end of June. Um, that is, if you recall, the a, a pretty key component of our plan. Uh, that will provide funds for the final engineering study and uh, our match for the Northern Borders Grant, assuming we get the Northern Borders Grant. We should hear next month whether we do or do not get the Northern Borders Grant. Um, I am going uh, later this month to an Opportunity Zone workshop. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Tasha Wallace from LCPC. 
we're meeting Ted Brady and a number of other uh, kind of experts on the opportunity zones, uh, which isn't going to provide the town with money, but it will help us sell plots uh, and sell the units up there once we get the public infrastructure built for the light industrial park. Good. Uh, on old business, the, no, the real news I have on old business is the board had asked me to evaluate and advance a draft of the, uh, we're calling it dilapidated buildings in this draft, it's called nuisance properties, uh, but it amounts to the same thing. This is Uh, so it's for our reading pleasure until Doug gets back? Yeah. <laughs> well, Doug had a lot of input in this, correct? Uh, Doug had a little input on this, but this is mostly a uh, draft from another town that has passed a, a similar measure. This was something our attorney had developed for uh, another town, and we shared a couple comments with them, uh, but it it's mostly we weren't sure before whether we wanted to still include something to deal with vacancy and vacant properties. Um, I had a hard time giving that up, but I think that I think that concentrating our efforts on derelict and dilapidated and nuisance properties uh, will be more effective. Uh, vacancy is currently a problem, uh, so it's really, it's really hard to give up trying to obtain that tool, but uh, I think this might be a little bit more palatable to residents, and I, I think it's more focused on uh, what are more serious problems. I, I think the vacancy problem will take care of, I don't want to say take care of itself, but it, it's not as permanent of a problem as these kind of eyesore buildings are. Um, I have a suggestion. Yep. It's been a few uh, years since we've discussed this with the village trustees. And um, it's a different board now, different members. Um, and the, the part of the difficulty we have with this is that we're really, um, the, the bulk of the problem is in, within the village limits with mm -hmm. vacant buildings. And then when we're dealing with places out of the village, we're dealing with recreational buildings, um, uh, agricultural buildings, places that really aren't an eyesore, they're on personal prop, private property, on acreage away from everything else that really is nobody else's nobody else even knows about. So we're trying to craft our regulation to adjust to that. And I'd, be, I'd like to ask the trustees again if they have any interest in working together on a, I mean, if, if we've already done some of the legal work, uh, if the village trustees would be interested in taking this on. Worth it, at least try. Yeah, I know the business community is putting a lot of pressure on Meredith to start figuring something out because we're feeling it, you know, yeah. it's empty storefronts big time. Just to ask. So, them, but I think, I know I agree. I absolutely agree. If they're not interested, they're not interested, but they've got some new members and I think they might be more. Yeah. To share with Meredith and to share with the trustees and see if there's interest in working together. It's been challenging with the uh, the merger study. You can just imagine how challenging this will be. Oh, this will be smooth. Is that? No. Yeah. Well, it's worth a try. Yeah. Right. Just to, doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah. Anything else under old business before we go into the new items? No. Okay. Uh, Brett. 
so the bread oven, actually Don and I were both just at the uh, community bake right before this. Um, the bread oven is having structural issues, which is making it really hard to use. Um, uh, Duffy, who I don't know his last name, he just goes by Duffy. <laughs> um, he's the one that originally uh, made the, the oven and recently did some overhaul to the inside of it because some things were cracking and falling off. But um, there's uh, Jasmine, particularly, who's you know heading up these community bakes, is feeling like he's um, a really difficult to communicate with. And B, not, she feels like his work is not good. <laughs> it's pretty shoddy. Um, so right now, uh, uh, stone from the inside is falling into the oven, which make, is making it shift so the door, the iron door that traps the heat in is not um, sealing. So you can't keep it heated to the degree that it needs to be heated to, to efficiently make pizzas. And uh, at the bake tonight, it actually, the fire actually completely went out because too much, or it's, the, the whole ventilation thing isn't working properly. So, um, Any good masons around? Well, I'm actually, funny enough, uh, an outfit I work for in Stowe that does interior design work, they also do bread ovens for people or have somebody that does bread ovens now. I'm probably pretty fancy. I don't know, but I was going to try to get some names mm -hmm. because it feels like we need to have fresh eyes on it and someone that really knows what they're doing. Is it so bad it needs to be taken apart and put back together again? No idea. Hopefully not, but it's uh, it's not really, yeah, it's not holding the way it should be. Or, I thought Jen was going to be in charge of the maintenance. And yeah, I need to loop her in. She kind of knew some stuff was happening with the door, but actually in the past day or two it's gotten really, really bad. Yeah, I thought you so said she, to loop her in. she was going to... Committed to managing right. it for a few years. Right, right. And I believe she's the one that got this guy. Uh, isn't that her contact? This I don't know. Guy? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the builder that she had originally worked with. Right. So. Was there a design other. flaw in the first place? I know nothing about these bread ovens in terms of their design. Um, that That's, yeah, that needs to be determined. The man that built it supposedly had built numerous. I know. Um, I know. Man, he may have even written a book or something I about know. it. Like he, I don't know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, you're right. Um, huh. um, they could be a fluke, but whatever the problem exists, whether it's yeah, regardless of whose fault it is, yeah, it needs to be fixed. So I don't remember. I'm not, I mean, we know. I remember that Jen was going to be the yeah. Person, the point person for the maintenance, but is, uh, again, fun. <laughs> money. Is there anything for the bread oven, or where was that? No. 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 I don't think we put any money into it, wasn't it? No. No, no it was that was the, the main selling point I know. that the town wasn't going to have to put right. any money into it. Right. And the town wasn't supposed to really maintain it either. Right. Okay. And it was supposed to have been done by yep. a committee or whatever yeah. that was supposed to look after yeah. it. And yeah. All okay. they were looking for was permission from the town to place it at that location. Right. So we have to loop Jen in to the situation. I'll just get some names if I can tomorrow because I'll be over there anyway. Um, so we'll go from there. But okay. So here we are discussing it. We're actually assuming some ownership of it because well, well we own it we own it right but i mean it's on our property we, we, it's on our property but it wasn't sold to us that way i think we need to loop jen in first because yeah. if she gets ownership in this yeah yeah 
Yeah, this was new news as of a couple hours ago, so okay. I just okay. I haven't had time to do that yet. But sure. let her know. Okay. Uh, inclusivity statement. Inclusivity statement. Yes. Uh, I'm. It has not gotten on the website. Or the Johnson. It needs to. It's on the website, but it's not featured prominently enough. Okay. Uh, yeah. And. It may even still say draft on it, so I'll fix it. Okay. Uh, and I'll I'll get it prominently on our our front page uh, and the select board page, and I'll make the same suggestion to the village about putting it on the trustee page. Okay. Yeah, if that could be a priority, that would be great. Is everybody happy with our website? No. No, it really is. It needs to be spruced up. And, it and, needs to and be the hosting, it, it's. I couldn't update our uh, agendas uh, on Friday or Saturday. Uh, I couldn't get into the website right. until Sunday to. Yeah, technically, we're. Uh, we. Well, I mean, we technically weren't in violation because we didn't have a website for that time. Okay. Uh, but. <laughs> but anyway, it needs to be spruced up. Um, well, that's and because you look at a lot of other towns, and they have really super websites. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And yeah. ours is, you know, I don't want to use the word cheesy, but uh, well, it's outdated. Outdated for sure. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, outdated. and not very alluring, like ooh, that's right. the town I want to invest in. Um, yes. Our it isn't included with our contract with our IT provider, but our IT provider does have people who can help us with that. Okay. Um, It'll cost money. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, you know, if you had somebody who does that as a living, they could spruce it up quite a bit. Some yeah. of the pictures of the select board members are a little dated too. Yes, they are. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Anything else on that? Um, no, just that I, I, um, I, yeah, we just need to do that. Yeah. And it's it's between the cracks for. At least it should be color pictures. Like um, which. Racial. No, yeah. the. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of ties also into that. Um, I know, Jackie Stanton has reached out to Brian twice. I don't think with a response yet about no. that. So. Um, She's getting frustrated. I'm getting a little frustrated. I just want, uh, you know, I'm not sure what um, we've provided some information about people who, you know, outfits that do this. So I'm not sure how to support you, Brian, to continue it forward or what what needs to happen. But what's Jackie's role? Uh, nothing. She just Jackie's just volunteering. She's got some good contacts in this, and and it is yeah. very helpful to have her with us. That. Okay. Searching it up and everything else has been hard. Uh, really, what we need to do is make a a time commitment for it. That I mean, we're if we decide that we want to do this in September or whenever we want to do it, you know, our July meeting is already kind of full. You know, we can do it August, September. We pick a month for it, and I'll I'll make it happen. This is in a, in a regular meeting, or are we going to do this? That's up to you. Okay. I okay. My vision that it was going to be a different day that yeah uh, should that we could you know like more like a, a weekend or a okay. Then it probably should be after summer. Yeah. Yeah. So Maybe early, early fall. fall. All right. Well, you know, before budget season and all that. So. Does September sound good? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll I'll get back to Jackie and uh, we'll I'll, I'll work with her, try and pick somebody, and set up for ideally a weekend, but not a not a regular meeting. Uh, and yeah, I think so. Cause this, the ones that I've gone to, they're you know they're. Couple of hours and they're a little intense. 
Well, <laughs> kind of was like, like if it was going to be a meeting, it was going to be the only thing we did that night. Oh, I see. Is it? And is this envisioned to be public or just the board? Okay. Yeah, which I think that's why Jackie reached out because because we've said it in the past that it would be a public thing. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um. I know, I know, I know, I know, I think of something, but. Does anybody have anything else you want to bring up? If not, stand adjourned. We're, we're not going to talk about anything else. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we we talked about talk uh, some of this stuff, general information, uh, all of this stuff. Or, I did we, we, return of certified uh, mail on the, on the dog bite, uh, it's just general information? Or we're not going to do anything about it? Uh, uh, that, we typically don't, but that does bring up something that I should well, mention. <laughs> you got a little ahead of yourself, Mr. Chair. Yeah. <laughs> um, we did have a little bit of trouble delivering the uh, corrective order for the decision from the uh, potentially delicious dog, but uh, we were able to deliver it. Uh, the constable delivered it by hand to uh, Shane. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's really it that I, it shows up in there that it was returned. I wanted to make sure that you knew that it so, we did follow through and it got to her. So looping back to the constable's statutory powers, that's one of them is serving. Yes. Have they gone to some training or is there anything coming up? They need to go to some constable training. I've got a flyer for the constables on my They've desk. They've been constables for a long time. I believe that Sharon has at some point in the past. Tracy has not been to any constable training. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I've got, like I said, a, something for the constables on, on my desk. I'm going to try and make time uh, coordinate with them when either or both ideally uh, can go. Okay, good. How about the health issue on Railroad Street? <coughs> I'm still working on drafting the uh, notice of intent for that. Okay. Um, you know, it's going to, the notice of intent will go out. Uh, what I'd like to do is in one notice suggest a a deadline for voluntary compliance that if it if it's going to be completed without a without the board having to hold a hearing to determine whether there's a health order or not you know it has to be work has to be completed by a certain date uh, and I want to make that clear in the notice I guess you would discuss your part of the old business, but we did say that we were going to try to visit an old business every day. Yeah, that's that's one of them, yeah. That's true. One there. All right. So we're covered. Yeah. We can cross off power washing Holcomb House. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully that's what next week they say. Yeah. Uh, Monday's the scheduled day for that. Um, Brian, the, I went to the last trustee meeting for a little while about getting food trucks on the um, Village Green. Um, and then I said, what about, because uh, I keep asking them to seed and reseed the grass on Railroad Street. And they said that they would be willing to do the labor if they're allowed to borrow our hydro seeder. Or something like that. Uh, they want to use no. our hydro seeder. Didn't they want to use our labor? Oh, or use. We're, oh no, no, they're going to do. They're going to give us the material. Yeah, we... we're negotiating how that's okay. going to go and how okay. that's going to be paid. Okay, so it is in discussion. Yes. Okay. I, and I don't want to throw cold water on that, but no. um, you know, the 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 green. <laughs> I just feel like some of these things are getting pushed relinquished by the village and the yes. expectations getting shifted over to us for us to do it. The green space between the curb and the sidewalk 
is, I guess, technically the homeowner's thing. They're making a decision now to create more of that sort of green space, those green strips yes. on Pearl Street without our input, without our input. So it's really clear to me based on that decision that it's the village's responsibility if they want to keep that seated, that they need to keep it seated without expectation which is pushing it back onto us. So I, I wrestle at the idea. We're, in, we're doing a nice thing and helping them out with the village green and some other things, but I, I feel like they're just keep pushing the stuff back on us. No, I, That's a good point. I, agree. Matt. I completely agree. Well, this in particular, using the hydro cedar, I had suggested it because the when they they did some seeding here, and they've done seeding in a couple locations that they're doing by hand, which is very time consuming. Uh, so they should work with. It would be much more effective for them, assuming we can make time for it, if they work out something for them to basically pay us to do it. Uh, just because we've got the hydro seeder, we can go out there, it takes our guys minutes uh, to do a fairly large patch of ground. Uh, I'm, I'm all about equipment share, I'm all about, you know, if they wanna use the equipment, if they're willing to pay us for the labor for our guys, that's fine too. Yeah. But it is their responsibility. Our last meeting we talked about shared employees, but we were gonna, did we talk about shared equipment? We didn't talk about shared equipment. Yeah. We were gonna we were gonna be talking about that yeah. uh, with the trustees. You remember what we were saying that uh, our equipment should be our equipment, theirs should be their equipment, and uh, there should be no more of the shared equipment. And well, if uh, they need our equipment, we furnish the operator, and then vice versa. If they we need we need their equipment. They furnish the operator. That way we don't have this problem about supposedly a piece of equipment coming back dirty or, or misused or any of these problems. So uh, if the employees are employees, 100% uh, town and village, and the equipment is 100% town and village, I see less problems. I, I tend to agree and FEMA publishes a schedule of equipment rates. It, we use it on all of our grant applications, all of our reimbursements. Uh, we're pretty well covered by it, so we can use that as a, a method for payment to each other. It's simple. Less trouble. I think the only shared piece of equipment we have now is the back. Right. And the backhoe is the only truly shared. The yeah. tractor has. They own. They, one hundred percent own it. We have in the past done some maintenance on it, but that's. But it, to Mike's point, it'd be better if we paid the FEMA rate. And they paid the FEMA rate, and we right. were just. Yeah. And then they maintained it. Yep. If it needs a new tire or new transmission it's on them the backhoe is 80 20 right it's 80 town and, and 20 village so i guess you know we could prorate it and then pay them for that 20 percent and then own it or the next time we purchase we'll just buy our own yeah. how old is that it doesn't get used a lot. No, it's it's got several more years before replacing it. Uh, I think it's getting replaced in, I want to say, four or five years. Anything else? Maybe we could look into the prorated fee and own it. We can get it appraised and yeah. see. Okay. Everybody have stomach for that? Is it a problem right now? The backhoe? It, it was. Know. Don't you remember? The backhoe? The backhoe, like a month or two ago. I heard the tractor. Yeah, it was the tractor. Oh, it was the tractor? It was the problem? Yeah. If it ain't broke. They stand corrected. I, I think if it's... If, if we've had no recent issues with the backhoe, let's just leave it alone. But the next time we buy, then we open the discussion. 
Yeah, and I, I believe that the tractor is settled for this financial year. Uh, that the village agreed or indicated that they didn't think that they were going to want to start compensation this close to us starting a new financial year uh, with a budget that had already been approved. Okay. Well, I thought that was the general idea. Was to, we're keeping track of the hours that we're using for the tractor. And yeah. That's being compensated in one way or the other. In the past, it was one who gets their salt usage. Uh, the tractor did not. You know. The tractor did not. Okay. No. Well, everything I would think should be in there if they're willing to. In in the future, it will be. Help us out this year. That's fine. Yeah. And this year, it's kind of our, our time to figure out what we're going to do in the future. Oh, okay. Uh, and then we'll implement something. You know, dur while we're drawing up our budget in a few months, we'll negotiate what the future dispensation is going to be. And I think the future dispensation should be that we just pay them the FEMA rates for use of the tractor. Okay. And you charge a fair rate on the salt. Yeah. Because we give them a break now. And yeah. they really shouldn't. Yeah. There should be a fair. We sell it to them for less than cost. We sell it to them for the tonnage cost, I believe. Uh, which doesn't take into our storage or other associated costs. Yeah, that's okay. Break even, somewhat. Yeah. Change the subject. Have you had a meeting with Scott yet? No. No, we need to get together. Do you have a sense of when you're going to have your meeting? We need to do it soon. It should be this week, but I haven't talked to him. Okay, good. So what is the schedule on that? Well, we're talking about something totally different, Scott. We're talking about merger proposal. Right, right. You and Scott are talking about the merger. And uh, so I'm just wondering how much further out this is going to go until we get this resolved. So we're we're, we're in our second year now. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we need, like I said, Last week, we need to crack or get out the pot. We, we have to do something. Yep. The problem is, it's not the only thing you know, on, on our agenda. I understand, but we do have votes from the yep. voters on both the town and the village to do something specific about this particular thing. Now, they gave us the merger and they gave us the, the rec coordinator. Uh, the rec coordinator was this past year. And the, and the year before was the merger. Mm -hmm. So we need to be moving on this yep. merger. No, I wouldn't say that we, we have been working on the merger. It's just a much more complicated issue. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And it came in much more expensive than what we anticipated. Yeah. Anything else? No. If not, we'll officially stand adjourned.